Hello everyone. What I'd like to do today is take you through a quick top 10 list of my favorite gadgets, uh, home automation devices for 2017. So here we go. Uh, welcome back. I'd like to thank everybody who's been joining in to see some of my videos. One of the questions I get asked all the time is what are my favorite gadgets? What do I want? What would I suggest people get started with? So here's my list of top 10 gadgets for 2017. So in no specific order, here is number one. The Plum Light Pad. The Plum Light Pad was a Kickstarter that uh, was very successful. They basically created the first Wi-Fi enabled uh, light pad dimmer, as they call it. Um, really nice Wi-Fi dimmer, connects directly to your Wi-Fi, has an app that can be used itself, is Alexa enabled. So go ahead and uh, connect this with your Alexa and control your lights with your voice. Nice thing that the plum, white, plum Dimmer has that none of the others do is what they call the glow ring. And essentially what this is is a presence ring around it. Uh, when you get close to it and it's dark or in the day, the ring will actually light up and it'll allow you to see where the light is. Added benefit to this is, uh, not official yet from the app, but some people have written third-party APIs to let you use things like OpenHab to actually use the uh, sensor as an input. So when somebody walks by any one of your dimmers in your house, you can trigger other events and things to happen. Number two on my list, the Ring Doorbell. Ring Doorbell is a really great way to get started in home automation. It's a fully standalone app if you want it to be. Uh, installs really simply using low voltage in your house. You simply take the old doorbell off, you wire up the two wires, and screw it back onto the wall. Um, essentially what the ring doorbell is, is just what it sounds like. It's a doorbell. When it rings, it sends a notification to your phone, which allows you to have two-way voice conversations with whoever's sitting at your front door. And of course, you see the video that goes along with that. Number three on my list falls into the same category as the Nest thermostat. This is one that most people have heard about. It's probably one of the biggest mainstream devices out there, but I think it's still a fantastic option. The Nest thermostat is super easy to install. You simply take your old one off, making note of your wiring scheme, and in goes the new one. The nice thing about the Nest is it takes away all of the programming. So by default, you just simply install it and you turn the ring back and forth to adjust the temperature whenever you want. After about a week or you two of using it, the Nest will actually learn your schedule and it'll start to work around that. Number four on my list is the Yale touchscreen keypad lock. So essentially what this is, is really simple. It's a replacement deadbolt for your front door. Uh, I actually have mine installed in my garage door, so I can simply come into my garage, and when I get out, it's just a simple uh, four-digit code you type in to unlock your door, and into your house you go. You can set this up with many different uh, key codes, so you can have different people who have access, and you can monitor who they are based on the code you give them. Number five on my list is the Raccio, Ranchio, not quite sure how this one's pronounced, Raccio. Uh, home sprinkler system. So now obviously this one's only going to apply to people who currently have a home sprinkler system, but if you do, this is a fantastic and easy way to upgrade and add some intelligence to your watering schedule. Um, at first, it's one of those things that seems pretty simple. You already just turn it on and turn it off. But the nice thing about this system is that it will actually learn the schedule that you need it to do and it will adapt. So if it's raining, it will not water. And it doesn't just use a rain sensor, it actually looks at weather predictions and even weather stations in your local area to determine how much rain is coming or how much rain has happened within the last amount of time and adapt the schedule. On top of that, it will also, on top of that, you can also set zones. So you can actually tell the system what um, what type of plants, what type of grass, what type of soil are in the areas for each zone so that it will water properly. Next one on my list is the Arlo wireless indoor outdoor cameras. Uh, these are really fantastic. They're really simple to get up and running. They're a little bit cheaper, uh, not just upfront purchase, but on a monthly subscription level. So if you're looking to get some wireless cameras up and running, they're fantastic for that. You can have two modes with these, which I really like. One is a hardwired mode where essentially it's powered and it's up and running all the time. The other one is actually a wireless mode. 
um, and this is where you actually charge the camera and you can place it somewhere. It's only going to send you, uh, it's only going to record video if there's been motion events and things like that. So what happens is the battery will last for a really long time. This allows you to place them in places that you normally wouldn't be able to. Um, and I found that you can even move them around. So when you're on vacation, maybe you want a couple extra views of your house, things like that, you can place one and they work just fantastic. Next up on the list is the Logitech Harmony Elite Remote Control and Hub. Now, no matter what we do to automate things in our house, we seem to still have simple IR devices. I mean, some people have VCRs, DVD players, TVs, stereos, amplifiers, and in the past, Logitech has always been a leader in uh, creating these remote controls, which would allow us to put macros and control all these things. With the new system, the new hub system, they've taken it to that next level and what they've done is provided a hub which can kind of fire out all of these codes. And the nice thing is that you can control this hub by most home automation systems. So you can add a level of uh, remote control or event based control to your home automation system. And then on top of that, you've still got your regular remote control that someone can walk into the room and use to turn on the system. Speaking of lights, next on the list is the LifeX bulb or LifeX bulb. Uh, essentially, uh, there was another popular one, Philips Hue, which got a lot of the fame, and I think it's because they were first to market. But at the same time, there was a Kickstarter for a bulb called the LifeX or LifeX. Uh, essentially, this is a Wi-Fi controlled light bulb. Nice thing about these is they're very bright, and they also have a full uh, spectrum of white level lights as well. So whereas in most of the Hue bulbs, it's mixing the three uh, RGB LED colors together, the LifeX bulbs actually have uh, white levels in there too. So if you want that blue hue to your to your lights, you can go ahead and do that. You want a nice warm white, you can do that. You want to go full color spectrum, that's there too. Uh, again, this is a standalone device, works well with Alexa. Um, and it can be used completely on its own, but take it to that next level, mix it with your home automation systems, and the number of things you can do with it are totally endless. Now this brings me down to pretty much my final two. Uh, one of them, I've spoken a number of times throughout this video, and that is the Amazon, Alec uh, Amazon Alexa. Alexa is a voice controlled device that essentially uh, by adding what they call skills to it, lets you tap in and control many different things. So there's some that are not really related to home automation. You can have it uh, read you recipes and do math questions for you and trivia questions, anything you would expect or anything you've heard of kind of a home uh, voice controlled system like this. But to add to that, you can add your music control. Uh, Sonos is in beta with it right now, so you'll be able to control your Sonos speakers pretty soon. Um, as well as any of your home automation. Most of the things on my list today are controllable by Alexa. So number 10 on my list. This is the one item that starts to tie everything to the other. Uh, Samsung SmartThings Hub. So SmartThings was a also a Kickstarter that came out quite a few years ago. Uh, essentially, they were pretty much open source. Their idea was to work very closely with developers and to provide essentially a gateway to be able to control all home automation devices. The idea was anything you wanted to buy would talk to SmartThings. SmartThings would tie them all together and allow actions and events to happen. The beauty of SmartThings was that the hub itself was pretty much just that. It was a hub that communicated with all the devices in your house and it used the cloud and the power of the cloud to be able to process and create pretty complex rules to do things like if somebody rings my doorbell, uh, automatically start re recording from my camera, turn up the heat, bring up the lights, and turn on some music. So you can do a lot of different things in there. You can start to add more logic and tell it to only do that during certain times or if only certain people are home. And this is where the power of home automation really starts to kick in. In my opinion, this is one of the best consumer hubs that are out there. I still talk a lot about Open Hub, but I think if you're just getting into home automation, or even if you're in pretty far and you don't want to deal with a lot of the nitty gritty of something like uh, creating rules yourself or programming, or getting to that lower level of home automation, SmartThings is definitely the best place to go. So that's it, that's my top 10 list. These are kind of the products that I think that someone who's in home automation already, or someone who's just looking to get started, they're all really good contenders to get things up and running. They allow you to kind of piece your system together one by one. Uh, none of them really rely on each other, but the beauty is as you start to add them to your system, they can all start to talk to each other and you can really start to create some cool uh, applications for your smart home. 
For those of you who have watched a couple of my videos here, uh, thank you so much. If you subscribe, that's fantastic. Um, to be honest, it's really helped me want to make more videos. Uh, seeing that people are actually watching them and getting some useful information out of them is uh, definitely a big plus. So if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button below. If you're interested in what I'm putting out, there's a little uh, bell icon. Click that. You'll get notified every time I put out a video. If you like this video, thumbs up. Um, and if you don't, thumbs down because it's going to help me understand what it is you're listening to. And if you'd like to be a bigger part of the conversation, leave some comments below. Thanks for so much for watching and we'll catch you in the next video.